Is the leaked transcript of messages between Titan and its support ship authentic or fake? A crew member on board the Polar Prince, when the sub imploded, contacted me and has cleared up all doubt and provided additional information regarding its last moments as well as the workings of the sub. These are the parts which are confirmed recovered from the June 18th implosion. We don't know how much of the rest has been salvaged and if the acrylic viewport has been found. A second recovery mission in early October retrieved the aft pressure dome and other unspecified wreckage. This photo of the titanium hemisphere was the only image released from the second operation. There is no firm information on how much shattered carbon fiber has been recovered. Given its critical role in the investigation, one might assume that a substantial portion is now in the hands of the investigators. The ballast weight, as depicted in my previous video, was not used after 2021. Instead, the pipe weights were hung from the frame, along with bags filled with steel shot, which worked better. A rotating rod released the bags one by one. Dissolving squibs would drop the bags after 24 hours. They also stopped using the weights on the landing skids. As illustrated in my previous video, the first version of Titan had a homemade carbon dioxide scrubber. Later, it was upgraded to a commercial radial unit located opposite the oxygen regulator. The first carbon fiber tube made a lot of cracking sounds and was scrapped. The second one was better and made no audible sounds according to the crew member. See my previous video explaining the two different hulls. The ocean is noisy and loud, and so the crew heard all sorts of external sounds while diving. There were several so-called leak transcripts that circulated online. One of these gained viral attention on YouTube, TikTok, and elsewhere. Approximately a third of my audience believe it is real, and the 19 minutes of panic it depicted. I can now confirm unequivocally that this transcript is fake. The investigation is ongoing and only the Coast Guard and the investigators are in possession of the real transcript. My source was there and saw it. There was no way the comm system could send long sentences over sound waves. Authentic messages had to be short and broken up and sent one by one using minimum words. The chat used sub and top. The made-up version used the wrong names. A was used to acknowledge a message. On board, they had a code sheet to abbreviate the communication. The fake transcript did not use any of the codes from the list, nor does it have any A's or K's. My source told me the final message from Titan was DRPD2W. This meant dropped two weights and is an example of how they shortened words. The crew member also confirmed there would never be pleasantries like calling them gentlemen and there's no way they would have been discussing their steps with a surface like that. They would have acted first. And if that's not enough, the timestamps of the fake transcript are all wrong by an hour and a half. The sub began its dive at 9.30 a.m. local Titanic time. Only somebody who was there would know this. My source confirmed that James Cameron was partly correct about the last moments. He was right that dropping weights was the last message from Titan, and it's true the support ship lost tracking and communication at the same time. However, Cameron was premature in assuming dropping weights signaled an emergency. They were on descent, they were a couple hundred meters above the seafloor, and they dropped their weights. Now, the only way for the ship to know that they had dropped their ascent weights, which would be a, an emergency abort, is if they had called that in, that they were, they were ascending. So I, I believe now that they had some warning, that they heard some acoustic signature of the, the hull beginning to delaminate. An investigation will hopefully eventually show what, what did happen, because we all need to know. It was standard practice to release the first ballast at about 400 meters from the bottom to slow the descent and land softly with only a small touch of the propellers. Four or five bags needed to be dropped for neutral buoyancy and they had dropped half. 
The last depth measurement from the support ship indicated the sub was still descending. If they had been rising at all, it would have been seen on the tracking system, which registered depth as well. And no emergency message was received by the Polar Prince. I know the leaked transcript has its true believers. A sensational story has more appeal. Everyone is entitled to believe what they choose, and I'm curious to see the comments. However, I take comfort in the knowledge that the crew were most likely unaware of any imminent disaster. I haven't come across any timeline for the investigation, but I can confirm that investigators have been interviewing the crew. My source wishes to remain anonymous as the investigation is still ongoing. If anyone else has insider knowledge, feel free to reach out to me. I am intrigued that Ocean Gate staff, who despite losing their jobs, have chosen not to comment negatively about Stockton Rush or the company, which may suggest he was liked and even admired, or it could be non-disclosure agreements. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.